I was wondering why she wanted help because I kept thinking, where is she? Why is she saying anything? <laughs> She's blind. Thank you, ICD-10 book. <laughs> it happened before then. <laughs> She's been in total denial about her eyesight. I, have. I don't want to. And she'll be going like this. And I go, where are you going? I, I was yeah. like, I was going to sit. No, I can read it like this. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this one again. If a patient with back pain is admitted uh, for, for placement of a nerve stimulator, the primary diagnosis would be, because we're, we're actually treating the condition, right? So go look at your guidelines. If you're treating the condition, what is the first code? It's going to be the appropriate pain code. So it's, it's going to be the appropriate code for back pain. That is that second bullet, right? After A, right? It's the neurostimulator, stimulator, right? Yeah. I can't see that. Yeah. So it's after A, the second bullet. When a patient is admitted for the insertion of a neurostimulator for pain control, assign the appropriate pain code as the principal diagnosis. But then it says, and this is the important part, when an admission or encounter is for a procedure aimed at treating the underlying condition and a neurostimulator is inserted for pain control during the same admission, a code for the underlying condition should be assigned as the principal diagnosis code. Do you guys see that? It's under A. The second bullet. Well, the patient's got pain. So they're coming in back pain. And they're putting a neurostimulator in. And the guideline says you have to code the back pain. Think about it. You're not trying to describe the back pain as acute due to trauma, right? You're trying to say that this patient has back pain. So... Think about it in relationship to the CPT code and the ICD-9 code has to have a relationship that makes sense. So acute pain due to trauma is not going to be enough information for the insurance company to pay for the insertion of the neurostimulator. If you're putting a neurostimulator in a patient's back because they have back pain, the back pain has to be linked to that CPT code or it's not going to get paid. Well, what I was wondering is, for the second part, when an admission or encounter is for a procedure aimed at treating the underlying condition and they insert a neurostimulator for pain control during that same encounter, right? you With code the underlying condition first and then a pain code. Then the G89 code is what they're talking about. So when they say the appropriate pain code, they're talking about a G89 code? No, they're talking about the back pain, the M code. Well, then what would the underlying condition be like, like a neoplasm or something? No, it's the pain, back pain. I mean, if, if a patient needs a neurostimulator for back pain, back pain is the underlying condition that the neurostimulator is being inserted for. Remember, your G89 code is only giving additional information about that pain, right? It says acute pain due to trauma or acute pain post-operative? I guess I'm confused. I'm just terminally confused. Um, I guess I'm confused because it says a code for the underlying condition but should be assigned as the principal diagnosis, and the appropriate pain code should be assigned as a secondary diagnosis. So if the underlying condition is pain and then the secondary diagnosis is pain, how do you differentiate? Because the G89 only gives more information about the back pain. So the, the secondary code would be a G89. Code. Right, and your primary code. Because think about this, Chrisanne. You're sending in, you're inserting a neurostimulator. So the CPT code that you're charging says insertion of neurostimulator. They want to know where and why. So it would be back pain would be your primary code that links to that CPT code, and then the secondary code, which gives more information about that back pain, would be the G89 code that says 
acute pain due to trauma, acute pain due to whatever, or chronic pain due to whatever. Got it. Okie doke. So let's do the next one. Actually, that's why I think these exercises are good, because it actually makes us put it into real mm -hmm. life perspective. Yeah. Okay. A patient encounter for pain management because of acute neck pain due to trauma is assigned the primary code of and the secondary code of. So this is for pain management, not a procedure. Check your guideline. It's right under A, the first bullet. Okay, so we're going to kind of be looking these codes up and trying to rule stuff out, right? On the multiple choice. Somebody tell me how we ruled out D. 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 Now that G89.2, is that a complete code? Okay, so that goes away, right? So if that's not complete code, that's gone. M54.2, what is that code? Neck pain. It's the neck pain, right? So we need that. G89.21, is that chronic or acute pain? So that goes away, right? So then we get down to how is this supposed to be sequenced. What does the guideline say? G89 has to be first. That's exactly it. And that, and that, this is an AAPC question. Yeah. It's for right. pain management. So if you go to that guideline, right under A, it says when pain control or pain management is the reason for the admission. No, you're not going to see it like that in real life, Elizabeth. But hopefully on the AAPC test, they're not going to change up the questions that much. Okay, number five, patient diagnosed with migraine not intractable without aura with status migranosis would be coded.
look very carefully. It's patient diagnosed with migraine that is not stated as intractable, no aura, with status migranosis. So all it is is status migranosis. Right. With status migranosis. Not intractable, no aura. Okay, we're ready? Okay, we'll wait for this. So there's no specific guidelines for this, right? So you've got to use the guidelines in the tabular? Let's go through it and see if we can figure it out. So when we look at the main three character main term, right? G43, it says migraine. And then you go to G43.0. And it says migraine without aura, not intractable, with status migranosis. So far, that looks like the best one. And then you go to 011, and it says migraine without aura, but it says it is intractable, and we don't want that. So that one goes away. Right? 901. Migraine unspecified, not intractable. Yeah, it's unspecified. 111 is with aura, and we don't have an aura, so it's got to be B. So it's the same thing almost as ICD-9. You've just got to match up every word and make sure your with and withouts are addressed. Okay, number six. Patient presents with pain associated with this primary lung cancer of the left upper lobe. You guys need to code it. It's not multiple choice. Look at your guideline. And look at the order they stated it in. It's, it's, it's in the, the way it's stated. Mm -hmm. So the primary thing stated there, patient presents with pain. Okay. So the chief complaint today is pain, and it's due to the lung cancer.
Attends. All right, do we have it? Yes. G89.3, C34.12. So your guideline says code G89.3 is assigned to pain documented as being related, associated with the cancer, and assign this code whether it's acute or chronic when the stated reason for the encounter is documented as pain control management. And then you code the underlying neoplasm. We all got it? Good. Number seven. Patient diagnosed with classical migraine intractable without status migranosis. Just one more to try. If you use your index, you've got to look up classical, right? Otherwise, you won't know what it includes. So you looked up classical, and it told you to look up migraine with aura, right? So you should have ended up with G43.119. Okay, good. Number eight, three-month-old Susan suffers from Lay's disease.
course, I went to disease first. Oh, did you? Yeah. Trying to find ways, and then I'm thinking, okay, where is it? <laughs> I'm well trained in ICD-9 coding. <laughs> Because it's, it's, it's an eponym, and so if it's an eponym, you go to the actual eponym first and then look it up. It would be under disease if it was cardiovascular disease or heart disease. Then you'd look at disease and heart. But because it's an eponym, you go to the eponym first. Yeah, let's go look. I'm going to go look at it. Mm -mm. Oh, that's a, that's a bad thing. Yeah. Okay, do we have it? G31.82. Okay, let's do number nine. Peter suffers from spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy since birth. Oh, a lot of subcategories and subclassifications mm -hmm. to get to it. Got it? G80.0, and the way you look it up is palsy, cerebral, spastic, and then quadriplegic. Okay. Don't forget the guideline. If they did not tell you that he's left-handed, right? Jim suffers from paralysis of his right upper arm, and they didn't tell you he was left-handed. Don't forget the guideline for the default. But in this case, we know he's left-handed, so it's not going to be his dominant hand, right? So look up the code for that. But he was really good. He realized he had had, he got me and he opened his mouth. Oh. 
So we're coding this to the non-dominant side, right? But what if they didn't tell us that he was left-handed? The default is always right hand is dominant. Okay. So you should have come up with G83.23. The rationale is according to the guidelines in these codes, G81, 83, um, should be identify whether the dominant or non-dominant side is affected. All right, we're going to take a break, and then we'll come back and work on diseases of the eye. I'm recording, and now we're there. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so let's see where we're at now. We're going to learn about uh, Chapter 7. Let's go. It's on page 11, Chapter 7, Diseases of Eye and Adnexa Glaucoma. Okay, so glaucoma is covered with the codes H40 through H42 and includes choices for type of glaucoma and laterality. So an example would be during exam of the right eye, Tim's doctor noted that the fluid in his eye was not properly flowing through the trabricular meshwork. He was diagnosed with primary open angle glaucoma that is not yet staged. Um, you would end up with H40.11X4. Let's go look at that because this is where we've got to put in that X, right? So H40.11. And it tells you you need a seventh character, right? And H40.11 just has one, two, three, four, five characters. So our seventh character is going to be um, four in this case because it's indeterminate. But you've got to put an X between the fifth character and the seventh character. Everybody remember that rule? <laughs> It's really confusing if you don't look at the seventh and realize that there's seven available and then count how many characters you have. This is the left of it, X7. Yep. Yeah, but, you know, it's really interesting not to talk about my IC9 class, but it was really funny. They Remember the worksheet we did with the 36 questions, the worksheet from hell? And they were all like, getting all the answers wrong. And I says, okay, we've only covered three on the worksheet. What do you think your biggest problem is? We're not reading. <laughs> Above or below the Above code. Above or below the code. And they yeah. weren't going up to the main three character category code and looking to make sure they're in the right neighborhood first. So, I mean, that, you know how easy it is to, to not read. Okay, um, when a patient has bilateral glaucoma and both eyes are documented as being the same type and stage and there is a code for bilateral, you're going to use the bilateral code, right? There's no point in using one for each eye as long as the stage and everything is exactly the same. When a patient has bilateral glaucoma and both eyes are documented as being the same type and stage and the classification does not provide a code for bilateral, Report only one code for the type of glaucoma with the appropriate seven character for the stage. Let's find that rule. So on page 11 again. So when a patient is under number two, when a patient has bilateral glaucoma and both eyes are documented as being the same type and stage and the classification does not provide a code for bilateral glaucoma, Report only one code for the type of glaucoma with the appropriate seven character for the stage. So you're not going to code it right and then code it left. You're only going to use one code. A little frustrating when we feel like you should be able to yeah, code it both. Yeah, we'll do both. Right. So make sure you highlight that. That'd be a good question, I'd throw you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they're, yep. but if they're different stages, right, then you're going to code each eye. Is 
this isn't about this. Will you tell us soon when our final is going to be so I can put in to take paid time off to take a day off so I can be fresh? Um, we're going to have a better idea after tomorrow. Um, I'm assuming it will be in about two weeks, but I can't tell you specifically yet, Chrisanne, because we're going to slow down when we get to external cost codes okay. at the end. So I, I really I can give you an approximate. But I, I can't tell you for sure yet. But let me get through tomorrow night, and then I'll have a better idea. Because there's really only 11 chapters in your workbook. And we're on Chapter 4 here. So I'm assuming it'll be at least two weeks out. But until we see how much we can cover. Because when we get to Chapters 6 and 7, they're very short. Very, very short. Okay. Now... When you have bilateral, when a patient has bilateral glaucoma, and each eye is documented as having a different type or stage, and the classification distinguishes laterality, assign the appropriate code for each eye rather than for bilateral, because you have different stages. Okay, so we're good there, right? When a patient has bilateral glaucoma, and each eye is documented as having a different type, and this classification does not distinguish laterality, assign one code for each type of glaucoma with the appropriate seventh, seventh character for the stage. So don't code glaucoma without looking at this, because if they're both the same and you try to code a right and a left, you're going to be in trouble. When a patient has bilateral glaucoma and each eye is documented as having the same type but different stages and the classification does not distinguish laterality, assign a code for the type of glaucoma for each eye with the seven character for the specific glaucoma stage documented for each eye. And we already looked at that one example. When it's indeterminate stage, your seventh character is going to be four. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Based on the clinical documentation, the seventh character four is used for glaucoma whose stage cannot be clinically determined. The seventh character should not be confused with the seventh character zero, which is unspecified. So don't get mixed up. If the doctor doesn't specify, you're going to use zero, right? If the doctor says indeterminate, you're going to use four. So if they didn't tell you specifically what the stage is, you've got to use zero. You can't use four. So don't indeterminate means they were they were just were not able to stage it. It doesn't mean that he didn't specify it. So he or she is going to say indeterminate. But if they just say glaucoma and they don't give you a stage, then you're going to use the zero. Okay, uh, disorders of the eyelid, the lacrimal system, and orbit include codes from categories H00 through H05. Hordeolum cannot close the eye completely. That's what that means. Hordeolum, that's a word you probably should know. Cannot close the eye completely, and a chalazion is a cyst of the eyelid, as well as other disorders of the eyelid. Codes are found in this category include laterality. So an example... Bob was experiencing painful erythematous and localized pain of the right eyelid with edema of the upper lid. The physician diagnosed the patient with hordeolum externum. The code that we would code there is H25, or, sorry, H00.011 hordeolum externum right upper eyelid. So you need to know which eyelid and on what side of the body. Then we talk about cataracts. Clouding of the lens of the eye. In ICD-10, coding for cataracts is separated by the laterality and type. So an example would be, patient presents with a complaint of streaking in the right eye and problems with glare. She's diagnosed with a senile cortical cataract. Then it's going to be age 25.011, cortical age-related cataract, right eye. So remember your laterality. All right, let's try practicing some. 
A note in Chapter 7, Diseases of the Eye and Annexa, instructs users to identify if applicable an external cause of the eye condition. In what section of codes would this be found? So it's going to be a note in your tabular, right? So you got to look up each one of those three character main category codes. This is a silly question. No, I don't like this one. I'm like, this is a answers. Really silly question. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Well, it's going to be D, you guys. Because that's the only place where it tells you. That's just a dumb question. I didn't have anything like that on my test. No. Good. Hopefully you won't either. All right, number two. Patient is found to have a sty of the left upper lid. What would the ICD-10 code be? I think I have this one marked wrong. Maybe. Oh, no, I have it marked right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Starting to doubt myself. I know, I was doubting you too. <laughs> <laughs> she loves when she finds me with the wrong answer. <laughs> I check her answers from back here. <laughs> 
<laughs> got to look for the word, the right word. Because you start reading it and you think, no way. Thighs hurt. Mm -hmm. They are so painful. I've only had one once and it was horrible. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Hard to find unless you're looking for the specific word sty, right? So it's A. All right. Number three. Entropion involves the turning in of the edges of the eyelids so that the lashes rub against the cornea. The ICD-10 for entropion of the right lower eyelid would be. It's horribly painful. So remember, ectropian versus entropian, entropian versus ectropian. Got it? What did you say? means? It means you can't um, close your eye. Or, or be from swelling. You got it, Chris Ann. Ready? Okay. Should be C. So we're all good there. Okay, number four. A patient presents with pigmentary glaucoma bilaterally, moderate stage on the right, mild stage on the left. Ooh, this is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a guideline right there, yeah. And I'll give you a minute to figure it out.
this is one I would code. I would just code yeah, it. I think you're better off just coding yeah, it than trying to. You get so confused yeah, looking at all of them going back and forth. So. And then look for the right answer. I do that with a lot of them, um, even on the test. Mm -hmm. I, I would start looking at all the answers, think, "Oh my God, they're so close together." Yeah. Think you nuts? It's just, just go to the yeah. index and code it. Just, did you do it that way? This one could the one that definitely matched. be on your test. Good. It's, too, it's not like ICD-9 where you only had like five codes. I mean, you got like way more. <coughs> when you only have four to choose from, you can look them up. But when you've got this many to look at. Oh, yeah. And you're trying to de decipher and then you forget. It's like, no, I would just code it. Because I think you waste more time looking. Yeah. Well, then you got to make notes all over it. Why you didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. No, B is one three two one. Oh, then that's one three one two. Well, that's weird. Well, I think they put the worst first. That's probably true. Yeah. So it might matter. You should put your most severe one mm -hmm. first. Well, how many of you guys actually went to the index and coded it from scratch? I think that's the easiest way when you have something like this. Then you can write it down, and then you go, that's the right one. Right. So it's going to be D. Okay. You have a question? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, did you just say you should um, code the most severe first? Yeah, that's right. why we As figured. A preference, or that's? That's that's the way I would do it on the APZ exam. I mean, anything you're coding when you have, like, burns or whatever, your default is always to the worst, worst problem first, and then, then the lesser one second. But in a two code situation, it's the right? Most severe. most severe first. Okay, patient presents with nuclear sclerosis in both eyes. Now this one I probably just go and eliminate. You might actually be better off in the index. Yep. Because <laughs> it's a tiny word you're looking for. Mm -hmm. 
Do we have it? The index is the quickest way. Yeah. Okay, should be C, because you've got to find the word sclerosis. And H25.13, you have to look above it to the to find it. H25.1 that says nuclear sclerosis above it. Everybody see that? Related yeah, that's why you have to, that's why it's actually better to go to the index because the index, if you looked it up, the subterm would be sclerosis and would take you right to that code. Yeah, it would actually, it took you, it had you go to um, cataract senile and then nuclear. So, all right, let's look at number six and you don't have multiple choices, so you have to come up with a code. Sally presents to her physician with acute serous. Conjunctivitis non-viral bilaterally. I just found a typo. Not on this one. In the next one. Yeah. The eighth one. Oh. Oh. Have it ready. Yeah. Guys, got it? Ready? H10.233. Good deal. Number seven, edema of the right orbit. You ready? There's a lot of index too, isn't there? It's a lot of index. No, you're good. Okay, we're ready. All right. H05.221. 
Okay, I have a typo on the next one. I'm going to fix it before I read it to you. It's not here, it's her. So you don't see that E, it's gone. You see that? It's all gone. <laughs> Listen very carefully. This is a trick question. Tina presents to her doctor with complaints of her eye not closing right. Her diagnosis, he diagnoses her with carotid conjunctivitis. It's a good one. I like these. It makes you think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It's an AAPC trick question. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> you keep me on the straight and narrow. Which eye is it? Um, Instead of saying not closing correctly, it said not closing right. They were hoping to catch you. You guys are smarter than them. Okay, number nine. The rationale in this example, the patient complains of her eye not closing right correctly, not her right eye not closing. So no laterality. Number nine, patient presents with a central corneal ulcer of the left eye. The eyes aren't so bad. The only place you're going to have to worry is glaucoma. Just make sure you don't put too many codes. That glaucoma rules really got me mad. If you have the ability to code laterality, mm -hmm. I think you should be able to code both codes. Right. Absolutely. So that's a, I'll remember that guideline just because I think it's really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's yeah. because it can spray. The reason we have laterality is so we can code laterality. I mean, even if they're both the same and they're both the same stage, I still want to say that it involves both eyes. Yeah. They'll probably change that guideline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. All right, H16012. Those aren't too bad then. All right, Tim is diagnosed with a single break retinal detachment of the right eye.
Look at your subcategories really well. Ready? H33.011. Good deal. All right, we're going to move on to Chapter 5. That's the other great thing about this new software. I can have several PowerPoints ready to go. I don't have to stop and start. Right. Right. Yeah, we do that so we can tell you where you've been. Where you've been in the class. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, let's look for a Chapter 8 Guidelines and see what it says. Page 12. There are none. <laughs> yeah, but then that leaves it up to you because now you've got to make sure that you're really paying attention to the tabular and the index for any specific guidelines for that code. And there is a note at the beginning of the chapter that indicates to use an external cause code following the code for the ear condition, if applicable, to identify the cause of the ear condition. So when you go to that, the, the H66 um, or H60 codes, where do those start, chapter 8? H60? Thank you. On page 559, and this is really important, you guys, especially when you don't have a specific guideline in the front of the book and the guidelines, you need to go to where the chapter starts to make sure you know what the rules are. So there's a note there that says, use an external cause code, find the code for the ear condition, if applicable, to identify the cause of the ear condition. It gives you the excludes two statements. And it tells you what this chapter uh, includes. Any other guidelines you're going to find are going to be based on um, the index or in the tab either when you're coding the specific thing. So since there's no guidelines, we're just going to practice. So test yourself. Jill is brought in to be seen for acute bilateral recurrent suppurative otitis media. Goodness.
Yeah, the days from coding from the tabular, even though you know where the code basically is, or bas it's gone. You definitely got to go to the index. There's a lot of coders with bad habits that just go to the back to the tabular because they kind of know where it should live. Mm -hmm. Can't get away with that anymore. Got it? I think it's just easier to go to the index. Mm -hmm. Then when you find the right code, you go to it, and it says mm -hmm. exactly what you what you, what it should say. It isn't there, then you go to the next yeah. I just really I really think that with ICD-10, when I took my test, that's how I took the whole test, even though it was multiple choice. I went to the index, coded it from scratch, then went and looked for the one to match it. Then if then if I couldn't find one, then I went back to the index to see where I had gone wrong. Okay, so it should be C. Okay, number two. Patient presents with two-day history of left ear congestion, increasing ear pain, and decreased hearing. Otoscopic examination notes blister in the ear. Ouch. Final diagnosis as bullous meningitis. You're right. I know. <laughs> it's great about these questions. I didn't have to check them because I had already checked them before. Oh. So that was. And then I wrote my arguments alongside them. Okay, if you went to the index, it should be fairly easy to find because it took you to H73.01, so you had to choose between 2 and 3. So A is the correct answer. Okay, number 3. Six-year-old with right acute non supurative otitis media found to have a perforated tympanic membrane. His parents smoke in the home. <laughs> so make sure when you find the right code in the index that you read the guidelines at the three character main category.
Well, they didn't even tell us what year it was, did they? Right acute. Is it right acute? Yeah. have a typo. No, I don't. I think the biggest pain, because I've been, I had to be really careful about typing these things in, data entry is going to be horrible. Trying to enter the codes into the system. Ready? Isn't it interesting the type of data they're keeping about smoking in the home? Mm -hmm. So the answer is going to be C? Awesome. All right. Well, we're done for tonight. We'll get back at this tomorrow.